Welcome back to another episode of our podcast, Fearless Journeys Thriving in College. I'm your co-host, Steve Johnson. And I'm Corinne Jansen. Today, we have an exciting topic to discuss that directly impacts college, our college student listeners. How our diet influences our mental health. Yes, that's right. We often hear about the importance of eating well for our physical health, but the impact on our mental well-being is equally significant. So to delve deeper into this connection, we have a special guest today, Cheryl. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been in the fitness industry for about, gosh, I think I'm getting closer to 20 years at this point, as sad as that is, and been really interested in nutrition and diving more and more into that probably the last 10 years. And I've really been intrigued with the the nutrition and how it plays a part on our mental health. So this is a perfect conversation for me. Yeah, perfect. Now, you are a certified sport and exercise nutritionist, is that correct? Yes. And what does that entail? So that goes into what to eat, especially for those that are active and into playing sports or even working out. And as of recently now, we're looking more into how that plays a part with our, our mental health as well and just coaching ourselves through the different stories that we've come into play. So we, I started with the, the background of having athletes in mind, and now I'm kind of looking at more of a broader spectrum. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Let's start by exploring the link between nutrition and mental health. How does what we eat affect our emotional health and our emotional well-being? So as many of us can see and feel, when we eat clean, you know, cleaner foods that have lower ingredients, they're whole foods, no chemicals, we feel great. We have a lot of energy, um, mental clarity. And when we do the opposite and we go on those, you know, whether they're binges full of sugar, full of fat, high processed foods, we have brain fog. We're, we're tired. We lack energy. We lack motivation. And a lot of that is causing a lot of depression and, and ADHD, mental, physical illnesses and diseases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably what happened to me today. I'm a little foggy because I had a nice breakfast burger, which is probably not the healthiest thing in the world. <laughs> what about um, things like nutrients, uh, omega-3 fatty acids? How does that affect our health? A nutrients like omega-3 fatty acids are so good for the brain. And that's one thing that we don't get enough of in our diet. So foods like omega-3, like you just mentioned, um, whole grain foods like rice, quinoa, even if it's whole grain pasta, it's better than, you know, the simple white pasta that we're eating, right? Greens, protein, lean proteins, colored vegetables, and, and even water. Those are all of the main ingredients or foods, sorry, we want to focus on for that mental clarity. It all helps with energy, mental clarity, focus, and it can do wonders for our daily, daily tasks. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it really combats that depression and anxiety that sometimes we feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It calms our nervous system. It's amazing how eating properly can actually calm and relax us versus put us in this, this brain fog where all we can kind of focus us on is the things going wrong. Our nutrition can play a big part in that. Mm -hmm, Definitely. Mm -hmm. College students often face unique challenges and stressors. So how can we prioritize nutrition and make healthier choices despite how busy our schedule is and kind of those limited resources? We do see a lot of food scarcity in our students as well. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's something that we're seeing more and more. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think everyone can relate to this. So sometimes we just need to take a step back and and just think of what we can do and what we can change. So for one, be prepared, right? What does your day look like? Can you prep some food at home? Can you make a meal or two to bring to school, to bring to work, whatever that looks like for you? Can you make healthier alternatives? You know, if you're used to that spaghetti lunch or, or Subway lunch, how can you make that better? What are some better options for you know, the foods that you're combining, you're making, right? Think of some healthier snacks, you know, add some vegetables into your day. Another big one too is water. We don't give water enough credit. 
Um, so yeah. start focusing on grabbing more water rather than the coffee. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and everything in moderation, not every day is going to be perfect. Not every meal is going to be perfect, but if you can focus on one little change at a time, that always adds up. That mm-hmm. always adds up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's more sustainable too, right? Like picking one thing, focusing on it and then adding on as we bring in those habits. Yeah. And you know what, as college and university kids, we already have enough on our plate. So when you think of even, you know, nutrition or, you know, trying to be active, we we need to think of things that we can add into our day instead of, you know, small things that we can add into our day rather than big things that are going to overwhelm us and stress us out even more. Mm-hmm. Do you have examples of like healthy snacks? Healthy snacks. Yeah. And I eat fairly simple and I like to grab and go as well because I'm a busy mom with two kids. Mm-hmm. So I do eat um, protein bars. But one thing we got to watch out is for the marketing gimmicks on protein bars and protein supplements as well. But making sure that the sugar is low in there, the Mm -hmm. fat is low, right? You want a carb, you want protein. Those are your big go-tos. Don't be scared to add in vegetables too, right? We want want the veggies, the cherry tomatoes, the peas, anything that's easy to grab and go. Rice cakes cakes are perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, grab some of that. I love Greek yogurt. Add a little bit of peanut butter in it. There's always ways to spice up taste as well. So it doesn't always have to be so plain. Yeah. Kind of tricky when, when you get used to kind of the junk food and Mm -hmm. you don't crave some of those natural whole foods. And I think that's a big struggle. Mm -hmm. When I have, when I work with a lot of clients, right, I do like to start with goal based attitude, right? Not let's, let's change the habits and start slow and build those in, Mm -hmm. right? And when we do start changing our foods, we do notice after a few weeks that you do start to kind of crave more of the healthier options and your taste buds change. So Mm -hmm. at the start, you're kind of not feeling as satisfied. You're not getting that kind of euphoric feeling from Mm -hmm. your food. But after a while, you do kind of tend to change your taste buds change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I was going to say that in my experience, like it does take time and effort, but eventually that changes like you're saying like you crave more of those healthy things yeah you start to enjoy it a bit more Mm -hmm. yeah 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 Yeah, it really shows that connection between your gut and your brain right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. truly i have a question for you i don't know if this will fit i've heard that like so we're thinking about like food scarcity and budgets and stuff i heard in the last couple of years that frozen like fruit fruits and vegetables can be a good option they're cheaper and the stuff is like picked when it's ripe and it's flash frozen. So those nutrients are really good in those frozen things. Is that, have you heard that? Yeah. And you know, that is, thank you for bringing that up yeah. because that is a great point actually. Yeah. Go for the frozen foods. Again, if it's a blend, just watch the ingredients that mm-hmm. nothing else is in there trying to preserve the fruits or vegetables mm-hmm. you're buying. But other than that, right, if there's no fruit juices added to it and it's not a canned good, it's mm-hmm. frozen brilliant yeah yes and it can store forever yeah like that fresh fruit or that fresh like broccoli head of broccoli can be so expensive but Mm -hmm. if you buy the frozen option way more affordable yes and we are going to find that more and more right now with inflation that people Mm -hmm. are going to start looking for those easy foods because that's all they can afford Mm -hmm. so buy frozen exactly and that'll last a while yeah thanks for confirming that yeah no thanks for bringing that up (laughs) so thank you so much for your advice so far Are there specific foods or nutrients that college students should focus on to support their mental well-being? Yeah, I kind of went into this with the past three questions, but omega-3, as Steve brought up, is really important. And that's one thing that I do have every client having or or supplementing with. Mm -hmm. Um, So omega-3, I always have clients as well have vitamin, whole vitamin. Multivitamin. Multivitamin. Thank you. (laughs) And a green supplement because typically we don't get enough vegetables and fruits in our diet. But outside of that, yeah, looking for whole sources of of protein and carbs. A lot of our protein, again, is mixed in with fat. So it's high in fat. Um, So looking for those leaner options, again, if you're able to afford so because that stuff is skyrocketing as well. Mm -hmm. So the the leaner chicken, Mm -hmm. lean ground turkey. There is also eggs, egg whites that are great options. Um, non-fat Greek yogurt is delicious. That's become my new dessert. What are some, and shrimp, all that. Yeah, salmon, steak, those are all good options. Again, it's getting 
pricey to eat mm-hmm. like that. So if you can even find a protein powder that your stomach can handle and it's lower in, in carbs and sugar, that's a great alternative as well. So let's say with omega-3 fatty acids, we often, of course, associate that with fish. And we know that you know our brains are built up on these omegas. And that really, like you said, helps us have that clarity. But what are some of the other alternatives than fish for omega-3s? Well, that's a great question. So I know we can get some from our grains and flaxseed. I'm just trying to think where else. I know the main sources are that salmon. Mm-hmm. I've heard some, some uh, berries and fruits may have some omega-3s. Is that, have you heard that? Before? I have not heard okay. that but I'm not going to dismiss, but I, yeah, I know like the main sources are the fish and the flaxseed and that's kind of the main things that I, that I push, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm not dismissing that. And nuts, do they have? Nuts have a little bit as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, once we look outside of the fish content, it does start to go down a little bit and then maybe that's why I focus more on that area. Right. Yeah. 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 Totally makes sense. So I just pulled it up fish and other seafood. So salmon, mackerel, tuna, herring, sardines, um, nuts and seeds, and they have flax, chia, and walnut. And then plant oil, so flaxseed oil, soybean oil, canola oil. Stay away from canola oil. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, that's probably that not back. the best one. <laughs> yeah, those are the quick options, that, mm-hmm. a quick Google search. It's a good start, though. Yeah. yeah. And those vitamins, too, they they do affect our neurotransmitters as well, right? And that's kind of where we get that increased mental health support. Yes. Right. Huge. And, and hormone regulation. I mean, it's, it's when we think about what we put in our body, really our whole body is made up of that, right? Inside and outside. There's so many complex actions happening within ourselves and it all is from what we take in for food. Mm-hmm. So not only is it providing us with fuel for the day, but our whole body depends on it so it's it's i mean when you think of that it's quite powerful right Mm -hmm. yeah it is like you said food is fuel right so how can college students optimize their energy levels uh and and their cognitive function through their diet well a, a big one that i work on almost daily with my clients is just trying to focus on building those balanced meals so a balanced meal would be something that has a a leaner protein, some veggies, complex carbs, right? So whole grain carbs and a healthier fat source. So building that in is, it's going to keep you for one, you're getting all your nutrients in there, but it's also going to keep you stable and satiated for another three to four hours, again, depending on portion sizes. So I would like to focus on that as well as portion sizes, because then you're feeling again, like I said, satisfied until that next meal, right? You're not craving, you're not crashing. You have that mental clarity and energy for the day. Another one is water, making sure you're drinking enough water. Again, Mm -hmm. a lot of the times we think we're hungry or craving something and we're just dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So that plays a big role as well. And again, just watching the, the caffeine intake as guilty as I am. I know that what that causes is a lot of anxiety when I'm not being careful with how much I'm taking and, mm-hmm. and watching my water intake as well. Yeah. And how much water would you say is kind of an appropriate level? You know what? I start everyone off at two liters. And so a lot of people are, are baffled and they think, oh my goodness, how am I even going to start there? But you know what? I use lemon water. Sometimes I'm using Mio just to kind of fancy it up. Not that that's the greatest thing full of chemicals, but I mean, sometimes you, you make do and then you can, you can start to increase that. But that's for sedentary individuals as well. Once you start becoming more active, that goes up to three or four. And I do find a lot of people struggle with that. But once your body gets used to it, you actually crave it. Like I, I can drink five liters a day, no problem. Wow. Like it just, I actually, I want it. It helps regulate me too. Mm-hmm. I feel, I feel calmer. I feel less stressed. I, I'm more focused as we say. So it's, it's, yeah, it's hydration is a huge, huge role in mental clarity mm-hmm. or mental health. So when we're talking about that, you know, how does that then, if we talk about our blood sugar levels, 
Because I know a lot of college students will just grab those sweet snacks, right? So, you know, how do we prioritize those or how do we manage that blood sugar level? It's hard when people aren't prepared with healthier snacks and you're grabbing and going. Because a lot of that stuff, when you're going and you're shopping at Tim Hortons or McDonald's, it's all things that are going to spike your blood sugar and you're going to crash, right? So if you can even find something that is, you know, lower, I don't want to say, I want to say lower in sugar and carbs, which sometimes, again, if you're eating out can be difficult, but higher in protein and fiber, that's going to keep you a lot more stable, especially when it comes to blood sugar levels. So it's going to keep you more consistent through that day rather than the high spike and the heart crash right Mm -hmm. so it's just going to keep you a lot more satiated and stable so i would try and lean for something higher in you know even a fiber content protein of fiber right Mm -hmm. keep you a lot more stable yeah and we can definitely tell when students are here for the day and they have these high sugar snacks they have those peaks and then that crash and then they can't do anything at this crash level, right? So Mm -hmm. that stable blood sugar definitely sounds like it's an important piece of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, and another thing I'd add to that too, this, this isn't something that you need for fat loss or, or even building muscle, whatever your goal is. But when we're looking outside of that, you know, the, the physical changes and looking at energy, I have everyone, again, eating every three to four hours to keep that consistent energy throughout that day. And and it is a big change in habit, especially, you know, if you're going to school, it's hard to do. But even if it's something small, like a little, like a little snack bar, protein bar, protein shake, even if it's a little bit of vegetables, something to kind of keep you going, that you're not experiencing that, those hunger cues, going for something that's fast and easy and then experiencing that crash, right? You're just going so up and down throughout the whole day, your body can't regulate. So just kind of keeping that consistency. Mm -hmm. Smaller meals more often. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've really found that that works for me because when I'm hungry, what do you, what do we all want to do? Something Mm -hmm. that's simple and fast. And is that always a healthy option? Typically no. Right. Especially if we're going out and buying it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to stop, you know, having bowls of, sweet snacks on my counter for for the students i'm gonna have to put something more healthy <laughs> oranges in and apples yeah. <laughs> so our next question cheryl could you share some practical strategies for college students to overcome cravings for unhealthy foods and make more nutritious choices to support their mental well-being yeah so typically cravings come from nutrients that are missing from your diet and stress also, a lack of sleep can cause cravings. So, I mean, college students are pretty much set up <laughs> to crave, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a recipe. It's a recipe for disaster. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, kind of take take a step back before. And when you're experiencing cravings, too, take a step back. Where is this coming from? Do you feel tired? Did you get at least seven to eight hours of sleep? Maybe more. Some people need more, right? Mm-hmm. What are the stresses going on in your life? All right. Is there how what's your diet been looking like? And once you can kind of pinpoint where you're lacking, then you can really dive deeper into it. But but some things I recommend is, again, plan ahead. Make sure you're prepared for the day. Right. Have some snacks if you're getting hungry to keep that again, that blood sugar stable. Drink up your water, too, because thirst, if you're thirsty, sometimes it comes off like we're craving. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're not actually hungry or craving anything. We're just we're just thirsty and even finding nutritious options you know what are some alternatives that you could make craving something well can you make it into a healthier option another one is mindful eating when you go to eat sit down eat slow chew your food don't do anything else get off your phone and just be mindful and and see how your body feels and react to that if there is stress going on in your life stop worrying about what you want to eat and sit down and journal, meditate, go for a walk outside. As we know, the nature cures all, right? Maybe mm-hmm. a walk outside can really kind of help you reflect and pinpoint what is what else is going on and what you really need. So food can be used as a mask, but it's not always what we actually need to do. Okay. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, um, I really appreciate the piece you brought about that Mm self-awareness and taking that step back and looking at what's going on because I think a lot of 
um, the struggles that we have in mental health, we lack that self-awareness. And if we can step back and look at what our diet is and where those cravings are coming from, I think it's very important, definitely, and I appreciate that. Now, the other thing that I'm curious about is sugar cravings, right? So is there, uh, is there a fact behind that sugar addiction? Yes, it's definitely an addiction. Now, this one, I mean, you, you have to be a little bit tough on yourself, too. If you're to the point where you're addicted to it and you feel like you're, you're craving it, it's, it's running through your mind all the time, be aware of the water. That's where I would first start. Look for different alternatives, like I said, too, for recipes that you can change and maybe alter how much sugar you're taking in. But you need to be accountable to yourself, too, and watching how much you can take. Because at the end of the day, right, you're in charge of you. So pay attention to how much you're taking in and maybe even get on your Fitness Pal app and start tracking what you're eating and how much sugar you're taking in and maybe areas where you can change and limit that. Um, but yeah, that's probably where I would start. And then looking at different recipe ideas, because like I said, we can make something that's delicious and we can turn it into, or sorry, we can make something that is healthy and nutritious and it, it's, it tastes like it should be something that is you know, bad for us. Right. So it's just kind of being mindful and playing around in the kitchen a little bit too. Corinne. What about um, that whole mindful eating piece? Do you um, have any experience with that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I'm really glad you brought that up because that mindful eating can be really helpful for people, again, to like pay attention to when they're full, how much food they're ingesting, and then also bringing them to the present moment. So sometimes when we are stressed out, when we are wrapped up in what's going on with school or work or family or whatever it is, We're not really paying attention to the moment. So mindful eating can be a really good tool to bring us into the moment, appreciate what's in front of us and really pay attention to like you've been saying, those cues our bodies are giving us, like I'm actually full or I just need water. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's so important, right? Like we just, when we're, I want to say binging and we're watching our favorite Mm -hmm. TV show, we're not paying attention to when we're feeling full or when, you know, when you overeat, you get that. Ugh, feeling mm-hmm. and then you start to feel gross mm-hmm. we are not paying attention to that we are not connected to our own bodies when yeah. we're eating like that so it's so important to take a step back like you said mm-hmm. and you know what when we're eating our food and we're slowly eating it there's a lot of breaking down of food and digestion happening as soon as that food touches our mouth and we start chewing mm-hmm. so we're missing an important phase in digesting mm-hmm. right and yeah. which can lead to a lot of gut issues mm-hmm. in return so I mean, there's so much deeper than what we're saying, right? We can really go into it. But I mean, yeah, it's so important to just take a step back and, and not rush and be present. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we do see those higher levels of, of obesity, I think partly because we use food, one, as a comfort, and two, we're not mindful about it, right? We, like you said, we sit in front of the TV and we just eat and we don't realize what we're doing and how much we're putting in our body. Right. Mm-hmm. And the obesity definitely affects our mental health, right? Mm-hmm. It has increased levels of uh, depression and anxiety. We feel that whole piece around self-image, you know, how we view ourselves. And that, that's a huge thing that, that we struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. A lot so of it is step. coping, right? Like mm-hmm. a lot of it is coping. Thank you, Cheryl, for sharing these valuable insights. Before we wrap up, do you have any final tips, thoughts, advice for our college student listeners? One thing I would like to say is, you know, there's there's a lot of information in this podcast. And just if there's one thing that you feel like you can implement in your life and it's going to make things easier for you and less stressful, start there. Build in a little this this habit. Build in the habit and and start that way. Make it small and and manageable. Right. And honestly, working on yourself, working on your nutrition, there is nothing more important than that. So, you know what, really make yourself a priority here. Yeah. And I think one of the things that um, you've mentioned, I think that my goal is going to just drink more water. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be a good start for me. Right. And even if it's an extra glass, it's something, right? We're moving in the right direction versus moving back or staying still, right? As long as you're moving, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did have one more question come to mind. 
If people are listening to this podcast and they want to get more information or get more support around nutrition, do you have ideas like are there supports that the college students could access or are there things online that you think would help students out? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I mean, I'm always around for help. Mm -hmm. Um, You can get a hold of me through the Leftbridge College website or even through my email, which is available on the website as well. I know there is a lot of people right now in social media platforms that are really kind of diving into more of like the the brain health and nutrition, and it's become such a big thing. There's a lot more research coming out. I don't know if I could drop names right now, but it's something that, again, if you connect with me, I could look up some names and, and give those references out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So Those are probably great resources, and I love that you're out making yourself available to students for that. Do you feel that also for students, let's say, in different cities who are listening to this podcast, different colleges and universities, is it a good option to access a dietitian, uh, you know, through their health system? Is, Is that a good start as well? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's so many accredited individuals out there that are able to help. You can connect with your wellness services at your school and see if they're not able to help, they'll surely be able to appoint you in the right direction. Are there certain criteria that you want to look for when you're looking for a nutritionist or dietitian? I would make sure whoever you're talking to has the schooling. And there's so many different certifications now, too, um, that specializes in different areas as well. So just make sure that that individual has the accreditation for what they're, for the knowledge that they're sharing with you. That's, that's a big thing. Cause there's a lot of people trying to make, 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 make some money and go mm-hmm. off their own belief system too. And their own belief system needs to be backed up with science. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Love science. So thank you, Cheryl, for joining us today and shedding light on the connection between our nutrition and mental health. And thank you to our listeners for tuning into Fearless Journeys Thriving in College. Remember, by making conscious choices about what we eat, we can nourish not only our bodies, but also our minds. Take a moment to reflect on your current eating habits and identify areas where you can make positive change. Please subscribe and send us your questions or comments. And stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll continue to explore topics that matter to college students like you. And remember, nourishing your body and mind is a lifelong journey. And every positive choice you make today is an investment in a brighter, happier tomorrow. So let's continue to feed our bodies with love, our minds with positivity, and together we'll unlock the incredible potential within us all.